Okay, so I got a question on how useful is it for a person who's not enlightened to be teaching that type of material uh, if they're not awakened? And also, if someone is listening to that, feeling some level of um, irritation, possibly, or perception or judgment uh, uh, coming up and what to do with that. So, well, I'm not, I, I'm not, um, uh, I don't claim to be enlightened and I talk about enlightenment. I think, you know, with, with everything, it's like, um, there's a few things. Um, uh I think it's ob obvious it's good to go and be in the presence of someone who's further along in the journey than one is. Uh, and if you can uh, be in the presence of, a, of, let's call them a teacher of enlightenment who's in the enlightened state, uh, that's optimal uh, because, um, you know, uh, uh, for, I mean, for obvious reasons, they not only speak the words from, from emptiness, the words have the power of emptiness to catalyze the student into those spaces because they're already in those infinite eternal spaces. And so it's very easy to um, uh, help the student to resonate at the level of the infinite beyond form. So it's great. Um, it's a great privilege if the universe allows you to meet and be in the presence of such powerful fields of uh, emptiness and to resonate at that level all that happens beyond the level of thought and speaking so that's the the the, the, the called, traditionally called the grace of the guru so um whereas someone who just uh, has recited an, a book on enlightenment and just speaks about it or pretends to be that i mean doesn't really have the intrinsic power uh of that even though um it's like the whole universe is giving lessons to all for for everyone uh for maximum benefit sometimes the lessons are painful and sometimes the lessons are positive uh, of students and teachers um generally speaking if the teacher is more advanced than the student i mean advanced meaning at a higher level of consciousness than the student it it, it can be of some usefulness even if they're slightly beyond this the student but of course if the student is beyond the teacher uh, and the teacher is saying things from a lower level of consciousness. Uh, for me, it's kind of like um, I pers personally wouldn't waste my time because what's the point of that? You know, like um, uh, I, if I haven't finished the journey, I want to be in the presence of those who can who can aid um, or read the books or be in, ideally in the presence of a teacher that can get the job finished off. Um, so rather than be in the presence of someone who's lower, um, though that seems um, seems obvious to me. Um, now, lots and lots of things are happening as one evolves, and there are lots of different levels of consciousness as one evolves. Mm. In terms of, um, th there is something, I mean, there's, um, you could say, spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment, I would say, is not judgment. So uh, spiritual discernment, or that uh, capacity traditionally called the awakening, uh, the opening of the third eye, to have spiritual discernment beyond the physical eyes, if you like, of whether something is in absolute truth or something is just pretending to to be, uh, or, you know, the false, the false teachers, the luciferic temptations, the wolf in sheep skin. Um, so that discernment, I would say. Um, uh, you know, may be coming up as one is advancing in spiritual awareness. And so there is a, some, it's, it's a non-verbal um, intuitive capacity to know when people are phony. Uh, and it's beyond the, beyond thought. And uh, it's kind of an omniscience. And um, uh, that for me isn't, that uh, uh, isn't judgment or thing. I mean, it's, it's just like, um, it's a gift. It's a spiritual gift, actually. Just like you know, this guy's talking bullshit, um, and uh, and there's a knowingness that that's true. So I mean, that's that's a spiritual gift. It could be potentially come if it's coming from the ego. It could be a judgment or something. The thing is, if it's um, it doesn't really matter. Both of them are, I would say, can be cleared in the same way. Um, uh, the sense the sense that there is a discomfort with the uh, opening of spiritual discernment which is a positive gift 
of going to higher levels of consciousness. If, if you just go to the observer, that's noticing something odd happening of uh, of the um, opening of spiritual discernment. Eventually, the spiritual discernment should be natural and should not be something new or odd, but it's just a, a gift that's accepted. Uh, but even if it was a judgment, uh, like, uh, you know, this teacher uh, is talking about enlightenment and he hasn't got a clue, he's nowhere near the enlightenment. Uh, so, um, you know, he's just reciting some book he read and he's trying to sound good. So in, even if that's the case, um, just going to the observer of that until the uh, judgment uh, or the uh, the judgment of the speaker dissolves into nothingness. But, you know, the spiritual discernment can sometimes be... Um, you know, like uh, uh, my view is, if if, the, if it's spiritual discernment, this guy's speaking uh, uh, rubbish. Uh, sometimes that 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 can be useful things. Like let's find that someone who's not speaking rubbish um, and uh, not waste time there. But it, may, it can be cleared as well. Just going to the observer. Um, going to the observer. What what's what happens when it, both it integrates higher levels of spiritual consciousness so that they become natural and there's no sort of shock that one has gone from a lower level of consciousness to a higher. It doesn't seem new or different or odd or something wrong with it. And also, uh, even if it is something coming from ego perception, uh, going to the observer, uh, what I do is, um, if it seems to be uh, uh, something of the ego, going to the observer is just to disappear it until it no longer appears in in, in the world. So. Uh, so a teacher that's obviously non-truth speaking is not really registered. It's kind of an irrelevant thing that's uh, you know doesn't really uh, it's not really occurring. So there is no no thing. But um, okay. So what about spiritual discernment? And why does spiritual discernment? Well, spiritual discernment is a spiritual gift. And the thing with I would share um, because I think it's important um, as a spiritual teacher to talk about temptations. And, and different tests that come up for uh, students at different levels. You know, spiritual discernment is a, a key gift while still in the world of duality, uh, not to be pulled down by um, um, Luciferic temptation or um, uh, Luciferic temptation, or you could say the, the collective ego, even though that's an illusion, that no such thing exists. But until one has totally transcended uh, this place, um, you could say um, there is susceptibility potentially to that stuff. So, um, you know, as as Jesus and Buddha both both um, both uh, taught their students, uh, Jesus uh, Jesus talking about Lucifer's temptation to own the power, uh, uh, to own power over the world. I.e., now that you're beyond karma and you're beyond duality, why don't you um, own this power? Uh, rather than um, let that let that non-verbal temptation go, or as Buddha talked, you know, who's beset by demons. So obviously, when you become um, a conduit of absolute truth and light in this world, uh, what you know, the collective ego doesn't really like it. And so, does that actually exist in absolute truth? No, there is no duality or separation. But this world, while one is in it. Um, and experiencing it, you know, there is potential. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, so I think I've answered that on judgment and discernment. So I think sometimes it can be discernment rather than judgment, and sometimes it could be judgment and not uh, discernment. Okay, stop the recording there.